Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'm actually gonna show you and give you a few examples as to how you can pay some bills every month after month after month if you're looking to get some returns off your investments right away. Now again, these are just my opinions, the strategies that I personally, personally like to use. Now here I'm gonna give you a quick example with our realty income and I'm also gonna give you a quick example with options trading, covered call writing, or you can do selling puts and I'm gonna give you a few examples, okay? So here with realty income, now first of all, if you simply like to buy and hold, like you wanna buy some companies, maybe you wanna buy some Boeing, Tesla, Amazon, I don't know, whatever you wanna buy, right? Now, me personally, I like to invest in dividend paying stocks or dividend paying REITs that pay month after month after month. Now, I love REITs because the REITs that I'm at least holding on my TD Ameritrade account, they're giving me dividend income every single month on a different day of the month. So every other day, it's like I'm receiving a paycheck that goes directly into my brokerage account and I can decide whether to spend that money or uh, transfer it to my bank and pay some bills or reinvest it to grow my account. Now, if you want to pay some bills at the end of the month, you can basically make these kind of investments and they'll give you a return every single month if you're investing in REITs like I do. Now, you can invest in whatever you like, but again, this video is to show you how you can pay some bills every single month through REITs or options trading. Again, I'm gonna give you a few examples. If, for example, you like ticker symbol O here, realty income, I love ticker symbol O, and I'm okay holding it for the you know long term, at least five years out minimum, if I was simply just looking to buy and hold. Now, this is a REIT. It's a real estate investment trust, and it pays out every single month. I believe it pays out 23 cents per share. So if I wanted to buy and hold, you know, I can just simply put in my money right there and I'm okay being down in the short term. As you can see, this is a five year history. This is going back five years. So let's say in 2015, you would have bought some, uh, you know, shares of realty income at $48 per share, $48.61. Let's say you bought 100 shares. So from 2015, you know, your account value would have gone up then down and then back up again. And then of course we had that market crash, right? And so everything went back, you know, down. But in the meantime, all those years, you would have been collecting dividend income. You would have been able to either reinvest those dividends or pay your bills every single month. And by now your position would have been a lot greater. Now here I have a hundred shares. If I'm looking to buy and hold, which is another option that I, I'm okay doing, you know, I can simply just put my money in there. I would receive currently right now about $23 per month, every single month for just letting my money sit there. Now we're, talk, we're talking about buying and holding. Now $23 is really not that much, right? However, it all depends on how you look at stuff. You know, the way you look at things, then it starts to make sense. Now, this is the way I look at things, okay? So I'm just giving you my perspective. You're using, you know, roughly, if I were to leave this here, I'm using around $6,000 just to make $23 a month in dividend income if I decide to buy and hold. So the way I see it is, hey, if somebody comes up to me, if my phone bill com company comes up to me and tells me, hey, we're gonna take off $23 off your phone bill every single month from now on. Would you even take that deal? Of course you would. $23 off your phone bill every single month after month after month would be a great deal, right? And then let's say you decide to put even more money into realty income or a different REIT or a different company that pays out a dividend. So now you can see your bills slowly but surely disappearing if you plan on using that dividend income to use to pay your bills or even if you want to go out for a nice dinner or whatever you want to use it for. Now me myself, I like to reinvest those dividends. That way, you know, I can actually work on the side because I'm still currently working and I'm doing these kind of tradings 
and reinvesting dividends, especially now with the market crash. I'm buying a lot of these companies that were so high at one point, and right now it's still a great price to actually buy into. Now, I like to swing trade, day trade, trade options. And again, if you wanted to leave this money here just working for you, then you can live off these dividends. Increase your positions, reinvest those dividends, and by next month, you'd get you know a bigger dividend payment if you start investing even more. And by the time you know it, you know, you're using these dividends to pay off your bills. Now, again, in this in this uh, scenario, in this example, look at how much I'm using. I'm using roughly six thousand dollars just to buy and hold and receive twenty three cents per share, which is twenty three dollars a month. Now, I'm going to show you another example if you wanted to do using less money so you can kind of see all the potential and different examples and different ways that you can make money in the stock market. Now, let me show you a quick example here. Now, I do all these kind of strategies. You know, I mix it up a lot. So, you know, a lot of people say, well, you're using $6,000 to make only $23 a month. Again, my money's working for me. I'm not doing anything. I'm simply buying and holding and I'm letting it do the rest. You know, I'm long term and I have a long term mentality on a bunch of these stocks and a bunch of these REITs. Now here with NEO, NEO, I've been swing trading, day trading, trading options, cover call writing and selling puts since it was $2 per share. Right now, you can see it's actually at $14.22. Now I'm giving you these examples because you can do these on any stocks that you would love to buy and hold at least you know think long term if you're thinking long term then these little you know down trends are really not going to affect you emotionally because when you mix emotions with trading that's when you start losing money okay so this is the first thing i think at least five years out minimum when i'm buying into these stocks because i'm okay with holding them now let's say with neil if you wanted to, let's say, live off the uh, monthly income. Now, NEO does not pay a dividend, okay? It does not pay a dividend. So this one, you would have to either swing trade, day trade, trade options, cover calls, or sell puts if you want to get that income going. You know, unless you just want to buy and hold for the long term. But then again, it wouldn't really be a, a monthly kind of thing, right? So this would be more of a long-term investment now. We're talking about getting that monthly income, so you can pay some bills or pay some rent or even a car payment. And I've actually given this example to a lot of my friends. Um, and so they can actually pay a car just with options using very little capital. Now, let's say, for example, OK, and this is just for example, you like NEO. You want to buy NEO. So let's say you bought 100 shares of NEO. Again, in order for this to work, we're going to you know, give you an example of a covered call. You would have to buy 100 shares minimum. OK, of uh, the stock. So let's say you buy NEO, you buy 100 shares, roughly that'd be a one thousand four hundred dollar investment. We'll keep it very simple. It's going to fluctuate because the market is open right now. So we're going to keep it simple. One thousand four hundred dollars is your investment for buying 100 shares of NEO. And we're going to, again, keep it very, very simple. This is not like, hey, buying the option back, swing trading, nothing. This is a monthly kind of thing. So you can get that monthly income. So the first step was, hey, you're looking to buy a stock and you're thinking, you're thinking long term. You're OK with holding it if you're down on it. And again, today you can see here it is. What is today? The uh, OK, so today is August 18th. So we can skip all the way to September 18th. That would be one month out. And let's say you bought NEO at $14 per share. Your investment is $1,000. $400. If you are okay with selling your shares at $15 between now and September 18th, then we can get into a contract with a buyer because you have 100 shares of the stock. Remember, total investment is $1,400. You as the seller can use those shares as collateral to sell a call to a buyer who is willing to buy your shares at $15 per share if the price of the stock moves above $15 between now and September 18th, then obviously your shares would be taken at $15. And so you would end up cashing out 
$1,500. So a total return of $100 on that. Plus, in addition, he's going to give you right now $111 that's going to get credited into your account the minute you send this order. And we're doing a one-month covered call. So again, we're just going to leave it, let it expire. Now, what's going to happen right now? If Neo between now and September 18th stays above $15 per share, even on the last day of expiration, most likely all your shares are going to get taken away and sold at $15. Remember, you bought them at $14. So not only would you make an extra $100 on selling them at $15, but on top of that, you're going to get that $111 we spoke about. Well, right now it's $110. Again, it's going to fluctuate because the market is open. So that would be a $200 and some change return for one single month. And we're talking about buying the shares, getting into that contract, locking in the profits, and letting it expire. Now, now you got to look at it this way now. Now, look at this. I don't know if you're paying attention to this, but... On the other example I gave you, we were using $6,000, a little over $6,000 to just buy and hold and collect those monthly dividends. Now, with options trading, we're using $1,400 to get a better monthly return, and the mentality is still the same. We're looking long term. The other one was a buy and hold. This one is a, we're getting basically into a contract to sell our shares between now and September 18th. And you only do it once. You send this order once, you forget about it, let it expire. We're keeping it simple. We're not talking about buying the option back if the price goes down or, hey, you know, rolling it over, nothing like that. Just keep it simple. If you're trying to live off your investments, use that return to pay some bills, to do whatever you like, then keep it simple. Just get into that contract, let it expire, take the profits. Now, what happens if your shares are not taken away? I've spoken about this in other videos on covered call writing. Then it's all rinse and repeat. The mentality was you're looking long term. So these downtrends, these red days should not affect you in any way. You were looking to buy the stock and hold the stock long term anyway. At least that's the way I see it when I'm buying into these kind of stocks, writing covered call contracts. You know, I'm only doing it on stocks I'm willing to hold. You got to get rid of those emotions, guys. If you do not, they're going to make you lose a lot of money. Every single stock that you buy out there is going to have a red day. What you do when you do have those red days is up to you. If you sell off, then that's how you lose money. You got to remember, you never lose until you sell. If you implement options trading, covered calls, then you're collecting some income, whether it's weekly, monthly, or even you know further out the money, you're collecting some income while you're down. And I made a video on that on American Airlines too. I have roughly around $8,000 in that. Uh, I bought 500 shares. I've been down on it, but I've been collecting income every month. Now, this is how simple you can collect income every month either with options or with dividend income if you want to start paying some bills. Now you kind of see the uh, whole potential on doing this. It's all rinse and repeat. With uh, dividend income, you're just basically, basically letting it work there, collecting those dividends. But you have to see the difference. I was using $6,000 on the other, account, on the other uh, example to make $23 a month. However, I'm long-term buy and hold. With trading options, I'm basically just getting into a contract for a month out, letting the option expire regardless whether my shares get taken away or not, and I can keep on collecting premium. It's all rinse and repeat. But uh, I wanted to show you guys these two examples because there's lots of ways that you can use either a lot of money or uh, less money to make more money. So, you know, in this case, I gave you two quick examples on all the things that I'm doing to generate that weekly and monthly income if I wanted to receive some income to pay off some bills. Again, uh, this is just my opinion, guys. If you guys have any questions whatsoever, 
feel free to leave them down below. I'd be more than happy to answer. I love making these kind of videos for you guys. And uh, again, you know, I, I'll see you guys on the uh, next video.